Mars, known by humanity since the dawn of civilization. However, throughout history, no one knew what the Martian surface was really like. But now, with the power of technology, we can reveal a map of Mars. For millennia, when mankind looked up at Mars, this was the very best view they could expect to get, little more than an orange-red blur. Then, in the early 17th century, the telescope became popular, and not much changed. We could now see that there appeared to be ice caps and seasonal changes in weather, but that seemed to be all, except for the canals. But people could see them all over Mars, there was even an effort to map Mars's canals. But until we could build giant telescopes, or send our telescopes closer, this map was still more art than science. Finally, by the 1960s, we could send probes out to Mars, and mankind was still using this map of Mars. By today's standards, this map is laughable, but this was a truly earnest attempt, and I'm sure we can at least identify the Marana Valley, Olympus Mons, and some other features too. Then came Marana 4. Marana 4 was a flyby mission planned to take pairs of photos as it sailed past Mars. And these are the photos. This is the first image ever taken of Mars at close proximity. It's also the first image ever sent back from deep space. The story of mankind being able to view this image is slightly more complicated than it would be today. Firstly, it comes as two images. Uh, there's difference in contrast. Uh, one's to try and see any terrain features and one's to try and enhance the atmosphere. And the plot thickens further. These images took a very long time to be sent back to Earth and be processed by computers to generate digital images. So while they were waiting, the technicians printed out a physical copy of the image and mosaic patterned it together and then filled it in for like a painting by numbers so they could see the image as quick as possible and in color too. This was what they, they came out with. Due to the process of creating the image, it comes out a little stretched, so I've rescaled the image and put it next to the original signal so we can compare them. These next few images were eagerly anticipated, however, a lot less was shown than people expected. They couldn't see any canals, um, all they could see was just a few changes in terrain. And then they saw this image. The image has no canals, but what this image does have is craters. It was feasible that Mars could have craters, but where were the canals? Surely the next few images would disclose their locations. But as more images came through, there were no canals to be seen, just more and more craters. Mars was not like the Earth. Mars was more like the Moon. The romantic notion of Mars being an Earth-like planet was gone. But for science, it was an enormous breakthrough, and we have been left with these amazing images. We were also able to use these images and shade them to create some amazingly detailed relief maps. The map of Mars no longer had canals. It had craters. But the map was very incomplete. And with these new discoveries, we were eager to send more probes. Here comes Mariner 6 and 7. First, we see Mariner 6's approach to Mars. It takes images at intervals as the planet rotates in the hope to capture as much of the surface as possible. You will notice that the planet bounces around between different shots. Between these images, the probe is taking close-up images of the surface too that look a bit like this. 
Now I'm not showing the close-up images in the right sequence because I'm saving my favourite to last, but this gives us an idea of what Marina 6 itself would have experienced on the way to Mars. Also, after crudely stabilising the sequence, I got this. These are my favourite close-up images of the Marina 6 flyby. These are the clearest images of Mars yet, and only just start to hint at the different features the planet has. Two types of images are taken, one is to see the tone of the terrain, and one is to capture its elevation more clearly. The new map of Mars was coming into focus. Now we see Mariner 7, and my crudely stabilised approach sequence. And here are my favourite Mariner 7 close-up images. Mariner 7 was reprogrammed in flights to cross over the polar ice caps. The view it got was astounding. From this point on, the artistic cartography of Mars would fade into history, and the new map of Mars would be built with our digital lines. In an early 3D map created by the Mariner approaches, we can clearly see the Mariner Valley and Olympus Mons. However, at this point, the valley was yet to be noteworthy, and Olympus Mons was an ex Olympica, a crater, not a volcano. In the meantime, Mars 3 had been launched. This probe would go into orbit and bring a lander with it. However, when Mars 3 first reached Mars, a planet-wide dust storm blocked out the surface from view, and Mars 3 used up a lot of its data on this empty, featureless dust. The lander detached and made its way towards the surface to take photos of its own. Sadly, the probe ceased communications after only a few seconds of being on the surface, and in those few seconds we received this. The signal is badly damaged, but some people say you can see the first ever image of the surface of Mars. But alas, it is probably more likely that this signal is just noise. The orbiter itself retained enough data to be able to send some images of Mars after the dust had settled, and it sent back these fantastic images. Further iterations of Mars 3 would be sent to Mars to survey the planet and its moons. These probes did make some major discoveries of their own, and create some wonderful composite images but they would pale into insignificance when it came to the next Mariner spacecraft. Join us next time as we further resolve our map of Mars. If you would like to support me and help the creation of these videos, then please join my list of Patreons. This series is a YouTube exclusive so alternatively, you can just like, comment and subscribe.
Thank you for watching.